Morning. <laughs> Why did we pause? Good. Good morning. No, I did it like Yoda. Morning. Good. Morning. Good. How's it going, guys? Hello, everybody. It is Sunday evening for us. Yeah. Boy, do we have a long weekend. Mm-hmm. It was nice, though. Yesterday, we had a 20-mile uh, Soul Rider bike ride. And in the middle of the ride, it got to like 95, 100. Yeah, so it got really hot. 20 miles ain't bad. I mean, it's not easy, but it ain't bad. But the heat... You know, it's like zaps you, but it was it was so fun. How many? Well, in the country too. Then it was a countryside you don't ride. Have a lot of shading out in the country, out in the fields. Yeah. Yeah. How many? By I didn't even count. Was it eleven, twelve? It was twelve riders. Twelve riders. Mm-hmm. So twelve riders. That makes a really fun ride. And then after all the soul riders got together and we came back to our house, hung out here. So that was nice. That was our first, like soul rider gathering outside mm-hmm. of an actual ride. Huh. So much food. Yeah. So I had told everybody to just bring a little bit of meat. Let's throw it on the grill, you know, and have fun. So that was really fun. Um, I realize now, like, we want to do that as an annual thing. Like, have a soul rider. I think more than an annual. Yeah? Yeah. Every weekend. No. <laughs> <laughs> so, anyways. No, I can't do that. <laughs> and then today we had service. Um, I don't know if you saw the service. I used a whole bunch of scriptures in today's sermon. Uh, I don't think there was any other way to preach that type of sermon that I preached because um, I, I, I didn't want to give opinion. I wanted to show what God was saying in the scripture. So, but I think... Uh, I, think yeah. I think you kind of... Um, there was one scripture where you kind of went back and you took it back to reference, you know... Um, when you just went back, you went back to reference the Old yeah. Testament, and I was just like, whoa. Yeah. And it's just, I don't know, it was really cool. Um, because when you do that, leave her alone. She came up alongside me. <laughs> um, it was just really good, you know, because when you're able to reference that the way you did, I'm hoping maybe you can even share that. Take it off now. She's going crazy again. Yeah, you know Only when I'm the camera turns do. on. I know. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to have to put her away when we do the videos because she's starting to become very distracting. I think she be, she be, she likes the camera because she was fine until I hit record. You know why? Because we're paying, actually, we're paying attention to her when we're not on camera. And when we're on camera, it's like she's like, oh, they're talking and they're not paying attention to oh, me. Oh, I don't know. So anyways, it was a, it was a fun-filled, very tiring weekend. And then um, after service, we had a fellowship with Anthony and Angel. Yeah. And um, they took us to this little little pizza place. It was really good. Yeah. Yeah, but... Um, so... Um, and then you boys got to go look at Harley Davidson. Yeah. I was, just went to go look around. It was right next to a Harley Davidson. Mm-hmm. I've never... I have <laughs> never been in a motorcycle shop. Mm-hmm. And, uh, yeah... Boys will be boys, and boys uh, like to look at... You know, motorcycles and stuff, and it was just funny because. Put it this way: if I if I had a good credit score, she would have drove the car home. Oh God! Whatever. What? <laughs> You're funny. You're like, no, you would have. <laughs> no, those some nice bikes though. Really nice to look at. Whole different type of bike than the one I'm used to, the one that pedals. But it was they were nice. They were really nice. I never really really looked at motorcycles. They're so elaborate. Like so many. I don't know. It just. They look, Who knows, baby? Maybe one day when we retire and retire, uh, all our kids—you never know. Mm. Maybe we'll go travel on a motorcycle one day oh, or yeah. something. You never know. Oh. Or we can buy a a mobile home one. A, one of those, not a mobile home. What is this called when you? An RV. An RV. You know, there was that joke. Remember when the lady says, "You know why we got an RV?" So they. What are you doing, Kitty? Um. There was a couple that, that said the reason why we travel in RV so our children can't find us. Oh, yeah, because they won't know the address. <laughs> they won't know the address. Yeah. Yeah. So um, I started another painting, and uh, I had said sometimes when I do paintings, I would show you how it looks, you know, as, as it progresses. Well, right now this is the ugly stage, right? No, it's not at the ugly stage yet. Oh, this is not. the developing stage. Oh. 
I guess. I just made that up, but it sounds good. <laughs> so uh, this is for Sister Phyllis, who watches. She always comments. And um, this is a bridge that she grew up by, right right by between Sacramento and West Sac, I think. Yeah, but right now it's nothing, right? No, you can see the sketch. So, so just to show you what I do, I don't know if you've seen it. Let she can't see, see anything. I'll, I'll put it close. So first, I lay the foundation first. And if I get real close, you can see I, oh, there it is. I sketched the bridge. Yeah, you can see it perfect. You can? Yeah. Oh. And um, that way it helps me. And uh, I'll be doing that one. And I'll, as the stages progress, I'll, I'll show you in the next few days how a blank canvas can become something amazing. You know. Do you have the picture? That's way over there. Mm. I'll show it later. So, actually, if you want to Google it, it's the I Ice Street Bridge in Sacramento. Yeah, but you wanted to show exactly what you're doing. I got it. Oh. That's because I'm cool like that. Yeah, so um, I've been doing a lot of painting. I really enjoy it. But I want to do yours next. Yes, I'm talking to you. <laughs> yeah, but seriously, guys, um, uh, it helps us. It's a real blessing. It's a lot of fun. And to be able to just create something out of out of nothing you know yeah. it's just it's really fun to to watch you know and um it's great you know i get excited every time i do a new project and every time i do one i'm like oh this is the best thing i've ever done mm -hmm. oh no this is the best thing i've ever done you know so um you think for it before we get into the verse yeah I'm, I'm pulling it up right now oh yeah i'm pulling it up because she has it right here mm. oh there it is yeah, but I want to put it exactly. So, actually... but yeah, guys, um, uh, I'm not sure I, when our what our next. I want to work on the next uh, devotional series. I'm still debating on which direction I want to go, but there are a few things I, I know that a lot of you enjoyed the how to hear uh, God's voice. And um, many of you really liked that series and really learned a lot. More, most, more of all, most of us, not even about liking, it's like most of you, a lot of you learned a lot and it rooted you in Christ. And so that's, those are the kind of series that I want to do. Uh, things that just root you, root you deep into, the, into Christ, into the kingdom of God. And that way you can grow. You can grow as a believer. You can grow. Uh, you're called to be warriors. You're called to be more than conquerors in this life because you have Christ in you. And um, that way you can be fully equipped. This might be too light. Did you darken it? No, I forgot. Oh, there it is. Look at that. Yep. So that's the I Street Bridge and SAC. Mm -hmm. So you will see that. You will see this. Well, smack me in the face with it. You'll see that become that. You see why I laid it out in blue? You know, that's the first color I do. I, I cover the whole foundation with blue. Because look. Mm -hmm. Eh? 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 <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Are you ready for the teaching? Yeah. Um, I'm going to go a little bit of Old Testament, a little bit of New Testament. And um, some of you that know the story, well, maybe you'll hear it in a different way. You never heard it. Those that have never heard the story, you're going to learn something I think is amazing. Now, um, I want to talk about Moses. Oh, yes. Moses, there's so much about the story of Moses, but I want to zero in on this one part. After uh, the Hebrews were released from Pharaoh and they went with Moses, he was leading them to, through the wilderness to the promised land. Mm. And they're out in the wilderness and they were starving. Yeah. There was nothing for them to eat. And basically, the people started complaining, and rightfully so. If you have your kids and they're starving, you're in the middle of the desert, you're going to be like, Moses, what's up, man? Did you take us out here to starve? At least back in, you know, back in my old life, you know, I had this and this and this, and now you got me over here in the desert. And um, so Moses came to the Lord and was basically like, Lord, my pe our people are starving, you know. So um, the Lord said something in Exodus cha channel, <laughs> uh, verse 16. Yeah, uh, let me see, what verse could we start? Because I don't want to read the whole thing. Okay, let's, I'm going to just, we're going to skip and jump just to get to the story. But Exodus 16, 4 says this, Then the Lord said to Moses, 
after he complained about it, right? Where are you starting? 16.4. Okay. He says, Behold, I will rain bread from heaven for you, and the, and the people shall go out and gather a certain quota every day, and I may test them whether they will walk in my law or not. So basically God said, Okay, I'm going to provide bread for the people. Mm-hmm. I'm going to provide them bread, and by providing them bread, it's going to be a test to see if they really trust me. This is what God said, right? So if we skip down to uh, verse 7, it says, And in the morning you shall see the glory of the Lord, for he hears your complaints against the Lord. But what are we that you're com- you complain against us? And then um, it goes down to, let's see, let's go down to verse 14. So Exodus 16, 14 says this. It says, In the morning, right, God was going to give them bread. So it says, And when the layer of dew lifted... So, you know, there's morning dew. Uh, there, on the, there on the surface of the wilderness was a small round substance. It was like everywhere, like snow. As fine as frost on the ground. When the children of Israel saw it, they said to one another, what is it? Like, why is this stuff all frosted? We're in the middle of the desert. What is this? You know, and for they did not know what it was. And Moses said to them, this is the bread which the Lord had given you to eat. This is the thing which the Lord had commanded. Let every man gather it according to each one's need, one omer for each person, according to the number of persons. Let every man take for those who are in his tent. So in words, the Lord said this, this is your bread. I want every family to gather as much as they're going to eat for that day. Just for that day. For yeah. that day, because, well, anyways, I'll get to that. So. He says, if you have a small family, gather a little bit. If you have a big family, gather as much as enough you need to gather. For that. Enough for your family. And yeah, that's it. for that day. And and when the sun came up, it would basically dry up mm-hmm. like, like snow. Mm-hmm. You know, so they had to do it in the morning. And um, it says here in verse 18. So when they measured it by omers, he gathered much. He who gathered much had nothing left over and he who gathered little had no lack. Every man had gathered according to each one's need. So the man of that house had to gather this stuff for his household. Verse 19, and Moses says that no one leave any until the morning. So only gather what you're going to eat for that day. So then in verse 20, look at, look at what some people did. It says, notwithstanding, they did not heed Moses. In other words, they didn't listen to Moses. But some of them left part of it until the morning and it bred worms and it stank. And Moses was angry with them. So people, you know, God is like, listen, are you going to trust me or not? And people started gathering. And I think a lot of people, by default, we, we want to hoard things because we're worried about tomorrow. Yeah. And he's like, God told you to gather just for the day. And you gathered more. So the next morning it went rotten. It stank and there was worms in it. You know, so the Lord did this every single day. And basically, the people had to learn to live out of the daily sustenance from God. Mm -hmm. Like he was training them. God was saying, listen, you have to learn to trust me. I will feed you every day. Don't gather for tomorrow. Don't worry about tomorrow. I'm going to give you what you need today. And the people would gather. And after a while, they they learned. They're like, man, the Lord's going to bless us tomorrow with more bread. So let's just gather what we need today. Mm -hmm. You know? And it was a beautiful thing because the people were in the wilderness for a lot of years. And God provided them every single day. Now, on the Sabbath, because the Jewish people wouldn't work on the Sabbath, and gathering was work. So on the sixth day, it's crazy, right? Because every day it would go rotten. Yet on the sixth day, the Lord said, gather for two days worth. Because the Sabbath, you're supposed to rest. Yeah. So they would gather two days worth and it wouldn't rot. Mm-hmm. But yet on the other days, it would rot right away. It was just crazy how God, and there's a lot of things in the Old Testament that God does, like as a, as a method to teach or a, a tutor or like training wheels. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm going to train you for something. So now this is why I wanted to read this before we jump into the New Testament, because a lot of things we read in the Old Testament might not make sense to you. As a Christian, you might be reading like, how does this help me? I'm not a Hebrew. I'm not, you know, a, a nomad or a nomadic tribe that's traveling in the desert, you know. But here's the thing, right, is that there's lessons in the Old Testament 
there's lessons, there's life lessons. And when you read those things as if they're lessons, it helps us in the, in, in the period of grace that we're in now. Okay. So now with that said, now let's go to the New Testament and see. Go to John. You have the message, huh? Yeah. Okay, so we're going to read this first and this. Okay. And then you can read and... Um, where are we at here? John chapter 6, verse... Uh, let's see. I want to get right to the heart of this thing. Um, 26. 26. Yeah. So Jesus is preaching, okay? He's preaching to the people. And uh, look what happens. It says, Jesus answered them, because they're basically like, where'd you come from? He, he just basically showed up. And, um, and Jesus answered and said, most assuredly I say to you, you seek me, not because you saw the signs, but because you wait of the loaves that were filled. Because what happened was it, earlier in the chapter, Jesus had b basically prayed for a few pieces of bread and fish. And with that, he prayed and multiplied and he fed the whole multitude yeah, the with multitude. a couple loaves of bread and some fish. Mm -hmm. So the next day, they're like, hey, we're hungry again. You know, and he's like, are you seeking me for what I'm going to give you? Or are you seeking me just for what I'm going to feed you? And then verse 27, do not labor for the food which perishes but for the food which endures to everlasting life, which the Son of Man will give you because God the Father has set his seal on him. Read that 26, 27. It says, Jesus answered, You've come looking for me not because you saw God in my actions, but because I fed you, filled your stomachs, and for free. Don't waste your energy striving for perishable food like that. Work for the food that sticks with you, food that nourishes your lasting life. Food the Son of Man provides, he that he and what he does are guaranteed by God, the Father to last. Yeah. So before we go on, something jumped out at me about that verse. Is basically God is saying, why are you making priority things that are perishable? Yeah. And I think that goes beyond food. Food that nourishes your lasting life. Yeah, but there's I think that's beyond food because most. Especially here in the United I don't know about the rest of the nation, but here in California, life is fast. How do I know that? I don't notice it because I'm in it. But when I had family visit from Texas, they're like, you guys live way too fast over here. Because everything is, what can I get? What can I get? What can I, I need to get a house? I need to get a new car. I need to get this and that. You're constantly chasing this carrot, you know? And, and to me, even though that's not food, it's perishable. Mm -hmm. You want the latest car. You want the car the neighbor has. You want the bigger house because somebody in your family got the bigger house and you want the bigger house. And then you want the best couches. You want the biggest TV. You're not happy with the 55. You want a 65. Somebody gets a 65. Now you want the 70. And it just keeps going and going and going. You're chasing after something that is perishable. Mm -hmm. And that's what it made me think of, even though in contest he's not talking about food. But he says, he goes, don't labor for the food which perishes. Labor for the things that don't perish, you know, and that is a, it's a reminder for, for I think for us, yeah. especially because, like, I don't think this makes sense, the fact that we do these videos to somebody that's chasing pleasures of this life. You know, don't get me wrong, I want to be financially comfortable, comfort. I want to be able to take care of my wife and my children and my family and not worry about bills, we all want that, nothing wrong with that. God gave us hands and a mind so we can work and, and we can think of ideas and we can be entrepreneurs or, or have a good job or whatever it is, you know, whatever it is you want to do. Um, but I think that sometimes the things of this life, it gets you off track of what's important. It does. It, I think it, it makes you, it doesn't allow you to set your priorities um, straight. Mm -hmm. And sometimes our priorities are no longer um, Yeah our true priorities. I, I truly believe that. Like we all want, we both want good things for our children. Of course. Um, but if you had to have a choice to say they'll have salvation oh, or they'll have an easy life. Oh, I'd rather them have salvation. Exactly. And th that's the priority here. And it's like sometimes our kids, because we have, I have grown kids, Sharon has grown kids, they don't get it sometimes. 
you know, because they haven't lived life. That that life, man. I, I remember being twenty, and it's like boom, you know, like like you're like, I'm always gonna be twenty, and before you know it, you're in your forties, and who knows of whatever age you are that's watching, you know, and and as you get older, you start listening to people that are older because there's wisdom there. And you know, it's it's crazy because like, you know, our chit chit, our our kids have grown up around being around mm -hmm. pretty much Christ. I know yours have for what the last all their pretty much all their lives yeah, because oh, of my parents, parents yeah. you know and and now you and mine since i was 17 years old you know they kind of grew up sleeping under the chairs and everything and and they did go astray but you know they they never stopped believing in god but they stopped serving you mm -hmm. know and but the thing is is that like even this morning you know my daughter wanted prayer yeah you know they know where to seek yeah you know and they know where to go and and that's the beautiful thing because they will never they will never truly leave they know where to go back yeah and that's the beautiful thing but i still pray for my children's true salvation and that's all a parent yeah. wants that's all a mother wants and i know that the day i do go home to be with the lord is that our prayers will never stop yeah. they will continue and that's why it says, he was, don't labor for food which perishes, but for the food which endures to everlasting life. And we know that that's the food we have been feeding them. This mm -hmm. is what we've been feeding them. Yeah. And we know that as long as we continue feeding them, that this is going to, it's still going to nourish them. Yeah. Even when we're not here. Mm -hmm. It's the nourishment. It's like the everlasting vitamin. Yeah. That continues to nourish them for life mm. because they will always remember that. You talk to me about your grandmother and about your aunts that used to pray for you and used to pray for you yeah. and those are things that you hold dearly in your life and you mm -hmm. talk about that yeah. and it still nourishes you it still touches you it's still it's still something that you that that you know that continues to work in your life because of those prayers and yeah. your mother's prayers will always continue to do that as well well, yeah, well now that i have a, a few family mem members that have passed on you know have there's times where they fed me made me a plate and those are wonderful memories. Uh, but the most now, the most endearing memories are the times that my aunts would sit me down and tell me how much Jesus loved me yeah. and how much I was called to serve God. I, mean, I have one aunt, my Tia Benny. I remember I was like complete drug dealer, complete, you know, and I went to a barbecue at her house in Modesto and she sits by me and she's like, what are you doing? And I would always, I'm the guy like, Gangsters nowadays, they have no respect. Back in the day, though, um, you, you, you were expected to respect your family. You might not respect your enemies in the street, but when you were around family, aunts, uncles, uh, grandmas, whatever, you, you became an innocent little boy, <laughs> you know? And I'd sit there and I'd be like, what do you mean, aunt? What do you mean, Thea? You know? And she's like, don't, don't lie to me. I know the kind of life that you live. And she would just sit there and give me counsel and tell me the day's going to come when you're going to serve God, God showed me so many times that he's going to, he's going to, he's going to move in your life. And so many people are going to come to the Lord because of you. And in my head, I'm like, what is, does my mom, my, does my aunt realize who she's talking to? You know? And it's like, she was speaking life. So it's like, no matter how many times she's fed me, those, I don't remember that stuff. I remember the time she was feeding me in the spirit. Yeah. She was feeding me in a spirit. She was speaking things into my life that she wouldn't live to see the day, but she was already knowing it was going to happen. You know, and, and it's like, that's why it says here, uh, do not labor for the food which perishes, but for the food which endures to everlasting life, which the Son of Man will give you because God the Father has set his seal on him. So verse 28 says, Then they said to him, What shall we do that we may work the works of God? And Jesus answered and said to them, This is the work of God that you believe in him whom he sent. I love that. This is going way different from what I wanted to talk about, but everything Jesus says is important. Yeah. I can't gloss over it. And look what he says. They said, okay, okay. So what works do we do? What can I do? What can I do? And it makes me think like now, it's like, what can I do? Can I, you know, do, how much do I tithe? How much do I help? How much do I go to service and Bible study? And this and Jesus is like, no, 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 you don't get it, man. This is the work you do. He was that you believe in him yeah. who sent him. He was, you want to do the perfect work, then to believe in me. Because when you believe in him, 
everything else falls in place. Yeah, nothing else will even matter until you believe in Him. Yeah, and because when I believe in Him, then I'm 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 giving offering with the open heart. Everything else has I'm, meaning. I'm going to Bible study with an open heart. I'm yes. going to fellowship with the open. So if you don't believe in Him. None of that matters. But when you believe in Him, everything falls in line. Everything has a meaning. To yeah. Everything. You give meaning to everything. You give life to everything that you do. Yeah. Everything has life. So, you know? yeah. Everything has life that you do when you do it un- unto Him. Mm-hmm. You know, I-, I, was talking to, I was talking to somebody the other day, and we were talking about doing the things of God. And, you know, I told her, I just love doing the work of God. It's good <laughs> yeah I said I just love doing the work of God I really really do and I said you know when people begin and it's the same thing just for people in general when people begin to expect and and expect you to do I, things is when you stop loving to do the things that you do mm-hmm. and it becomes more of an obligation yeah and yeah, then, I've heard you say that a lot. Yeah, and, and, I, and you know that I say that a lot because, you know, it's because you lose heart. You lose heart in what you do. And it's almost like, you know, I'll use this example, and, and I know I've, I've said this to you many times as well because, you know, I've, I've been made feel, feel that in, in the past and in other situations, and I've been like, man, you know how you, you can go and a person can serve somebody a sandwich and it can be a measly sandwich, a ham and cheese sandwich that you serve it to them, but you serve it to them with, you made it with them out of love. And you love them so much that you just make it for them and you're just like, here, I made this for you. But I did it with my whole heart and here you go. But if that person comes and sits down and says, make me my sandwich and demands it, then they just take away the pleasure and the love of you being wanting to do that for them and it just takes away the love of you doing it and it becomes an obligation and god doesn't want to obligate us to stuff and people do and and god doesn't want somebody who feels obligated he wants it from our heart he wants to say i want you to love doing this for me Mm -hmm. he goes i want you to do it for me do it with the best intentions do it with your best then that's why i tell you when i when i talk to women and i tell them give your best presentation and that's why people laugh at me sometimes when they say why do you fix everything up why do you why is presentation so good to you yeah because when we give and when we do one to christ why can't we give him our best why can't we do our best why do we, like you say, why do we try to overdo too much and, 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 and kind of something over, um, when, when they were doing, when they were taking too much mana and it would just go rotten and it, and it'd be filled with worms and everything. Why overdo it when we just need enough to make it the best that we can make yeah. it, you know? So why not take something out of a Tupperware, put it onto a platter and present it with our best? Yeah. You know, so I, I just wanted to share that because yeah. to me, I think it's just so important that everything we just do, we do it out of love. That's good. Yeah. Um, we haven't even got to the part that I really want to get to, though, and this is good. This is really good. Where are we going to? We're say? still there. Okay. We're still in John. Okay. So basically, the people say this because he had just fed them the day before 5,000 people plus their families. And it says this, verse 30. Therefore they said to him, What sign will you perform then that we may see it and believe you? What work will you do? So he just fed them. They come back the next day and they're like, So what sign are you going to show us now? Like as if he was some kind of magician or something. Oh, wow. Like he's there for entertainment. And then they said this to him. They said, Our fathers ate the manna in the desert. Remember we read in Exodus? Mm-hmm. He goes, as it is written, he gave them bread from heaven to eat. So in other words, they're almost challenging Jesus and yeah, saying, yeah. hey, if, if um, the bread came down for them, what are you going to do for us? What are you going to do? Are you going to outdo it? Are you going to send down apple pies or something? Like, mm-hmm. what are you going to do? And look at this in 32. And Jesus said to them, most assuredly, I say to you, Moses did not give you the bread from heaven. 
but my Father gives you the true bread from heaven. Wait, let me get blurry. There it goes. My Father, he, so he straight up said, he was no, 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 no. Hold on. Pump your brakes. He didn't give you bread from heaven. But my Father in heaven, he's going to give you the true bread. For the bread of God is he who comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. Mm. And then they said to him, Lord, give us this bread always. So he's like, man, that wasn't nothing what happened to Moses. My father is going to give you the true bread that gives you life, that gives, that's going to give life to the whole world. And they're like, oh, give us this bread. It must be tastier. And Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. <laughs> he who comes to me shall never hunger, and he who believes in me shall never thirst. I love that. They're just like saying, hey, send us, send us bread. And he goes, oh, man, I'm going to one-up that. I'm not going to give you bread that's going to keep you from day to day. He goes, I am the bread of life that came down from heaven, came to feed the entire world. Can I read the message? Yes, please. It's really good. I like that it starts with they waffled. They waffled means that they're like in confusion. They're kind of like, like, duh, you know? <laughs> Anyways, it says they waffled. Why don't you give us a clue about who you are? Just a hint of what's going on. When we see what's up, we'll commit ourselves. <laughs> it's like saying, "Yeah, you know, yeah. show us what you can. Show us what you can do." Moses fed our ancestors with bread in the desert. It says so in the scriptures. He gave them bread from heaven to eat. Jesus responded, "The real significance of that scripture is not that Moses gave you bread from heaven, but that my Father is right now offering you bread from heaven, the real bread." The bread of God came down out of heaven and is giving life to the world. They jumped at that. Master, give us this bread now and forever. Jesus said, I am the bread of life. The person who aligns with me hungers no more and thirsts no more ever. I have told you this explicitly. Because even though you have seen me in action, you don't really believe me. Every person the Father gives me eventually comes running to me and once that person is with me, I hold on and don't let go. I came down from heaven not to follow my own with, but to accomplish the will of the one who sent me. Yeah. That's awesome. So, as we're getting to close in this video, I'm going to bring this whole thing around. Jesus says he's the real bread from heaven. And we know that the people in Exodus were being fed every single day. God had told Moses to tell the people, only take what you can for that day, because tomorrow, yesterday's bread don't matter. And I say that to say this, that if back then that bread was only good for a day, that means that God only wanted the people to eat fresh bread. Now, to Jesus, if Jesus says he's the bread of life, then you can't live off of the blessings of yesterday. He wants to give you fresh bread every single day. It's so tiring when I hear people talk about the healings they saw years ago, the revival they saw years ago, the, the, the amazing Bible studies they taught years ago. Man, that's yesterday stuff. What is happening today? At the Old Testament, they said, just take enough for today to give you enough for today. And I'm, I'm re redoing that challenge today is don't live off of the things of yesterday. I want to see salvations today. I want to see healings today. I want to see people delivered today. I want to read what the Word of God gives me today. Yes. So today will reap tomorrow. Exactly. Yes. That is why, that is, this is right here, a core reason why we do daily devotionals. That is why. Yeah. Because even though yesterday's devotional blessed you, we're going to give you some fresh bread today. Amen. You know, yes. and and um, be, in Hebrews it says Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. So if God gave bread for a daily sustenance, knowing that tomorrow he's going to give you fresh bread, and if he's the same yesterday, today, and forever, and if he's the bread of life, then he wants us to have fresh bread every day. And if it's the day that we don't do a devotional, get in your Bible and say, Lord, do this prayer. Lord, I'm going to read. Give me fresh bread today. And you read it, and God will give you the sustenance to make it that day, to strengthen you that day. Because we get up and make breakfast to feed our flesh. Yes. But what are we feeding our spirit? Yeah, amen. So that's what I wanted to talk about. Um, I think it's important. It's important to realize that we can't live off of yesterday's accomplishments. 
Amen. We just keep going. Amen. And you know, and and another thing, I noticed that we don't usually tell people, you know, share it. But you know what? I do want you guys to share it. I do want you to share these devotionals because I've noticed that it's been blessing people. Mm -hmm. And you know what I did notice? And I do want to share this because it's important to me. And and I know it's going to be important to you when I say this. From these devotionals, we have been able to go pray for people. We have been able to speak to people that have contemplated suicides, people that have been going through depressions. There's people that have been reaching out yeah. and people that you guys have probably even shared this with and or maybe just through you sharing this have somehow come across um, this, this these devotionals mm-hmm. uh, and people that maybe we had that we don't even know and we have made some friendships we have uh, been able to just come in contact with people even through the phone and just been able to pray me myself with some women as well and David with a lot of different people as well and this is this is what the mandate is so I am going to say share the devotional um, I know we say oh well we're okay with just a few a hundred that are watching but you know what our point is to go out there and reach the world. Yeah. And that is what we want to do. We want to reach the world, share the sermons, you know, mm-hmm. share the word, um, share his love. So hit the like button, you know, and, and share it. Because, and subscribe. And subscribe, yeah, subscribe, you know. Now you get our daily, you get a daily uh, notification that we just did a video. Yeah, and, and definitely, you know, because like I, like I said, it, it really does bless my heart. Um, when we're able to pray with someone, you know, just like I said, just this last week, we've had many responses to where we've been able to pray with a few people yeah, and um, and even go visit a few people, people that I didn't even know. And I, I do want to share this, that I did go meet somebody um, new in the hospital that had the same condition that I had. Uh, and she was uh, going to be having surgery and she's watched us on the devotional and she blessed my heart more than she even knows. Um, she really, truly did bless my heart. And, and if she's watching this, you know, please know that I'm praying for you and for your surgery. But it's moments like that that just really, really does um, does impact a person's life. So you guys just continue watching and just continue being with us every every morning because we got to be there for one another and we just got to continue to grow God's kingdom. Amen. Yeah. And, you know, I, I want to add something to that. Is um, if you can get a piece of paper, I want you to think of 10 people that these devotionals can make an impact on their life, whether they're believers or non believers, whether people don't want nothing to do with church or whatever. If they love you, write a note and say, hey, I'm going to send you this link. Um, can you please watch it? And this is what I want you to do write down the names of 10 people. And you know their situations in their life. And if you've watched our devotionals, you know which is the one that they need to hear. Because remember, this is it's a one-shot deal because uh, first impressions. And it's there, especially non-believers that want nothing to do with you know church and all that. Um, write the name, 10 names. And then go back to our channel and say, you know what? I think this is going to fit for this one. This is going to fit for this one. And write them a note saying, hey, guys. Um, and you just write something personal to them and uh, say, can you please do me a favor, please? And just watch this. And you send them the link of the specific video you think pertains to them. Amen. And can you imagine if, because usually we get two to 300 views. And if everybody sent it to 10 people, that could be 2,000, 3,000 people that we could reach of what we're, of what we're doing. And all we're, what are we doing? We're sharing bread. Amen. That's all we're doing. We're sharing bread, you know. And I really want to get started on my prayer canvas that I've been telling you about. And I'm hoping that everybody can join me on that prayer canvas, you know, because as we start 
Um, as everybody starts coming in and I start seeing people that are requesting prayer, I want to be able to put their names on yeah. that prayer canvas and fill up that prayer canvas. And I'm hoping that other people can also get involved in starting a prayer canvas so we can, all of us together, be praying in unity together mm -hmm. so we can all be praying at the same time for each other yeah and i think that's important too because we gotta we gotta come together in prayer we really gotta come together in prayer because i i know that there's so much power in prayer and when two or three are gathered or more man it's just gonna be powerful Amen. i know there's so much that we can defeat in prayer so we we gotta do it guys and like you said you know start you know writing those people down and, and for those same people pray over that piece of paper when you're about to give it yeah. to them pray over it you know pray over their life over their situation and give it to them you know and say you know what i i spoke a pray over this and i pray that this blesses you and hand it over to them yeah explain Amen. to them too that we're kind of crazy so yeah, we, let them know warn them please yeah. that we're you know that we're not normal <laughs> so all right guys have a good morning have bye. a good start of your week and god bless amen bye bye guys